YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and twas the night before the Sunday night football game against the Kansas City Chiefs and that's a game that a lot of people feel so many different ways on but for us to get an outsider's perspective a Chiefs fan's perspective we have a special guest courtesy of our guy Garnett West to come on the show and join us to let us know how he thinks the Ravens are gonna be against the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. So team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Uh, and in this video, we got a very, very special guest. Uh, we have Mello here to talk with us. One one last conversation that we have to have before this Ravens and Chiefs game that we have coming up. Uh, so, Melo, go ahead and introduce yourself. Where can they find you at? What do you do? Uh, and how in tune are you with these Kansas City Chiefs? Yeah, I'm pretty in tune with them. I, I fall asleep, but you can find me on Twitter. It's at M-E-L-L-O on Twitter. I'm the host of the mic Up podcast. You can check that out, too. It's a daily sports podcast. We do talk a lot about the Chiefs, but it's also just – it's all football – all the time, pretty much. And we'll try to dive into other topics, but uh, I know where my bread is buttered, and that's what the football topics. <laughs> All right, I appreciate it. And thank you for coming on, too. And shout out to our guy, uh, Garnett, for making this happen. Um, so just to, just to dive straight into it, the Chiefs, they are uh, obviously a powerhouse. Had a lot of drama last week with the uh, Cleveland Browns. What were some things that you feel went wrong in that game against the Browns, especially early on? I think with the Chiefs, man, sometimes, honestly, like they just overlook some of these opponents. I had last year making that playoff run, I really felt like they became complacent where they just knew like, all right, we have Mahomes. He's going to bail us out on any of these situations. And even like, thankfully for me as a Chiefs fan, sometimes they're right on that one. But uh, I, I did look at that defense and, and still question it. Now they had Frank Clark out. They had Tyron Matthew out. Sounds like both those guys are going to be, be, be back for um, – this week so that will help out a lot but yeah. also uh, you know this is a different offense than the cleveland browns yeah with lamar jackson out there he can burn you anytime from anywhere on the field right right yeah that's true um so with, with the cleveland uh, excuse me not the cleveland defense with the chiefs defense my apologies um what are some of their their biggest strengths on defense uh, you know hopefully it's that pass rush like i said frank clark was out last week. It sounds like he's going to play this week. But I also was very impressed with Chris Jones. And if you're going to beat Lamar Jackson, I think you have to put him in situations where he does feel a little bit of pressure. And I think the Chiefs can do that, but it's will they. And, you know, if Ronnie Stanley's out there for the Ravens, that's going to make things very tough for them. But I, I do think that getting after him, but with Lamar Jackson, it's such a unique situation where what, getting after him might not be enough. Or sometimes you do get after him. And you just force him to run the ball, which can be me even more than him throwing the ball. Sometimes. And thankfully for your Ravens fans, those Chiefs corners are not good. Even Legereus Sneed, who was a guy I was really excited about this year, I thought he struggled. And he struggled against the Browns and Baker Mayfield. So going up against the Ravens this week could be um, could be a lot of points scored on Sunday. Mm. And um, you, you did bring up the Ravens offensive line. Uh, and that's big. Uh, that's been a big cause of concern for us as Ravens fans, uh, because even before the season started, we were worried about our offensive line. So then we go out there in the Raiders game and, and they struggle li literally all game long. Um, and now Ronnie Stanley, he's out. We don't know how long he's going to be out for. Uh, we lost our starting left guard, Tyree Phillips. He's on short term injury reserve. So we don't know how long he's going to be out for, but it's going to be at least three games. Uh, Alejandro Villanueva, he's expected to move from the from right tackle to left tackle, but he struggled big time. So our offensive line may be a bit of a makeshift, uh, but this happened last year too, uh, and and it ended up being the Achilles heel of the Ravens uh, long term. So that leads me to um something a, a trade that I just really uh I wish it wouldn't have happened um, because yeah. I would have rather the Ravens had kept him than gotten rid of him. Uh, because I just felt like, and I knew the Ravens weren't going to re-sign him long term because they're not going to pay two left tackle. They're not going to pay tackle money to two of them. Um, but with Orlando Brown Jr., uh, Orlando Brown Jr. was somebody that I was hoping that the Ravens would just keep. I know he wanted to get traded because he said he wanted to play left tackle, so I know he wanted to make some money. No problem with that. 
but I was hoping that they would keep him and just worst case scenario franchise tag and trade him uh, after that. But they traded him to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, and it ended up sort of being a, a win-win for both teams. Of course, the Chiefs, they got a left tackle because last year the offensive line was just, it was a mess. And they made it all the way through the playoffs and whatnot and got to the Super Bowl. But then the Super Bowl just, it, it exposed everything. Because uh, you can't do anything, no matter how great your quarterback is. Without an offensive line, it, everything is that much harder. Um, but Orlando Brown Jr., how would you say he looked last week overall? I, you know, I was pretty impressed with him. And that was a guy for me. I was excited about the trade because you're bringing in a new left tackle. But I also kind of question it. That move from right tackle to left tackle mm -hmm. is not always the easiest transition for guys. But, I mean, he's handled it very well. And with the week one matchup, I mean, he definitely got tested with Miles Garrett out there and mm -hmm. Jadavion Clowney. Uh, and I thought he handled himself very well. And, you know, the rest of that offensive line, it's a little bit of a question as well. But with Orlando Brown, uh, I'm starting to come around to it. I'm a little bit more confident. But, you know, with the Ravens, they're going to drop things to create pressure. They might not have the Miles Garrett-type pass rusher, but they'll find ways to get after and pressure Mahomes. And I think with the left side, you can look at Orlando Brown and be like, all right, that's okay. We're good there. But I do worry about that right side with all those rookies. I mean, the Chiefs are starting three rookies, essentially, with Lucas Nyang sitting out last year. So I, I do have a little bit of pause still with, with them and, and what's going to happen over there on that side. They look good in week one, but, uh, you know, after week one, things get exposed. Defensive coordinators go back, they start looking at tape, and they find your weaknesses that maybe, you know, that other team wasn't able to expose in week one. So that makes me really nervous for the Ravens facing them specifically. But that left side looks pretty good with Orlando Brown Jr. Okay. And I, I didn't realize that the Chiefs had that much inexperience uh, along the yeah. offensive line. I knew the offensive line was like literally brand new uh, from left to right, but yeah. I didn't realize that they had that much inexperience, especially on the right side. Yeah, now, center, uh, right guard, and right tackle, all rookies. Hmm. <laughs> Experienced <laughs> rookies, but definitely rookies. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 good to know. But at the same time, um, last week, the Raiders offensive line, they didn't have that much experience in – the Ravens weren't able to get get pressure on uh, their car consistently. Um, and speaking of the Ravens pressure, now, of course, with the Orlando Brown trade, uh, they were able to use one of those picks that one of those first round picks to select the Dafi away. And, and last week he looked good. But um, there is another pass rusher that the Ravens recently picked up uh, a little bit before the season started, who used to be a Kansas City chief. Uh, and that would be Justin Houston. Um, at this point in his career, he's obviously on the, the, the back end, so to speak. Um, but what do you feel like he can really bring to this matchup uh, as a veteran pass rusher? Yeah, as a veteran pass rusher, you still have to worry about him. I don't think he's an every down player. Like you said, at this point in his career, uh, those days are just probably past. But, I mean, you know the Chiefs are going to line up and throw the ball a lot. So I do think that Justin Houston can play a lot of snaps against Kansas City. You don't have to worry about him in the run game. I, I know a lot of our my Chiefs fans – are excited about Clyde Edwards Alaire, but they just really haven't utilized him much. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a lot at the beginning of last season, but then they went away from it. Uh, he wasn't very involved last week. So I do think a guy like Justin Houston, you can put him opposite. And and he's that big power rusher to the speed rusher on the other side. Mm -hmm. And that does, that makes me nervous. And he's such a technician, like I said, with that right mm -hmm. side of the Chiefs offensive line. You get Justin Houston working some of these guys using some pass rush moves they're not used to seeing, and it could be a scary day for them. And, you know, Justin Houston could eat. And, you know, I know that he's an NFL player. He's ready to go every week. He doesn't need that extra motivation, but he's going to get it this week. I, I do think that this is almost like a prove it game for Justin Houston of you let me go a little bit too early. He was still good with the Colts last season. So I do think that he wants to put it to the Chiefs a little bit this week. And, and speaking of prove it games. There's another guy on the opposite side of the ball on offense uh, who obviously had a lot of success with the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, but one thing that had been a problem throughout the entirety of his career uh, was not his production when he was on the field, um, but just his lack of being on the field. Uh, and that was Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins, uh, in his debut for the Ravens last week, he did his thing. He did have a couple of drops now, but he certainly made up for it uh, with a couple of big plays. He got a, a nice play where he got a lot of yards after the catch and, of course, caught the deep ball from Lamar, the little over-the-shoulder deep ball. Um, and, and he made his impact be known right away. Uh, so Sammy Watkins, uh, I can't even say at this stage in his career because usually that's a phrase that's used for older veteran players exactly. and whatnot. 
But it because it, it just seems like with Sammy Watkins, it seems like he's been around a lot longer than he has, but he's only like 28 years old. Yeah. Uh, so with Sammy Watkins, uh, how do you feel about because obviously he was with the Chiefs for the past couple of years um, and, and he what he brings to the Ravens is somebody that's li literally played won in every single type of game and lost in every single type of game. Won a Super Bowl with you guys a couple of years ago, lost a Super Bowl with you guys last year. Um, but what? How does he benefit this Ravens offense? Now, I, I think with him, anytime he's out there, he's probably going to be good. That seems to be the case with him. That's what I learned in his time at Kansas City, that if Sammy Watkins is healthy, you have to worry about him. And especially with this Ravens offense, I think he got a little bit lost in the shuffle with Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. But I think with the Ravens, I don't know if he's the number one receiver, but he's definitely that veteran receiver in that locker room that can help guys like Hollywood Brown. So you definitely have to worry about him anytime he's out there. And it's another, like you said, a redemption game for him as well. I don't see – I didn't even make that correlation of how many guys had played for both teams until you started throwing, you know, a couple of them at me. But it is – it's definitely a redemption game. It's almost like a little bit of a, a mini rivalry. I, I think that yeah. it's starting to get to that point. But with Sammy Watkins, he definitely wants to have a proven game as well. And, you know, he's so good with Lamar that – he can hit the deep route. He's still got the speed. He's not yeah. old. He's been in the league for forever, but he's still pretty young. He's not even 30 years old yet. But he's also really good underneath and in the middle. You know, not a lot of receivers in the league are comfortable going over the middle and making those hard contested catches. Sammy Watkins is still one of those dudes that can do it, though. Right, right, right. And uh, you mentioned how this could be sort of a budding rivalry. I, um, For me – I, I just I don't feel like it's a rivalry yet. Uh, we play yeah. the Chiefs seems like every year, but for me, a rivalry is something that goes back and forth. And, and just for this game against the Chiefs, it's just been going all back. Um, and it's it's been it's been a struggle, obviously. And two people that have been a huge part of that struggle, well, minus Patrick Mahomes, but he is obviously a part of it. But Tyreek Hill and, and Travis Kelce, those two are just yeah. They are headaches, man. Like But it's like these guys are literally literally always just one play away from a big play. Um yeah. if if for somehow, some way, I don't think it's really possible to do it to both of them. Maybe to one, and, and maybe if you even do it to one only for so long, but if somehow, some way. Tyreek Hill and Travis Kels were taken out the game by Ravens defense. And that would take a lot of adjustments. It would take just a lot of everything. But who do you feel would be the players that a lot of us Ravens fans may not know about or may not be too familiar with that could possibly step up to the plate just in case those two uh, aren't doing anything? Man, that's a worst case scenario for Chiefs mm. fans right there. And it is, it's mm. tough to do. But I mean, if those two aren't getting the ball, I think somebody does have to emerge and kind of step up and be that number three target. It used to be Sammy Watkins. You know, a lot of the Chiefs fans are waiting for Nicole Hardman to have that situation where he does step up. And if you can't find a way to take away Tyreek Hill, I would hope that he could step up and take those touches or those targets away. But it's just not something that we've seen yet. I'm looking for you know a Noah Gray type guy, the rookie tight end. I'd love to see him get some more action and mm. develop into a number two tight end. With Travis Kelsey and what he's able to do, uh, you can play both those guys on the field at the same time. You can put you know, Travis out in the slot. You can do a lot of creative things with him. But if the Ravens can find a way to take away Tyreek and Travis Kelsey, or you know, even in just you know play by play, if they're able to cover those guys, I think they're still going to eat. They're going to get their production. But if you can take them away, you really need a McCole Hardman to step up, or Demarcus Robinson is a receiver who's been really good. He's very athletic. Mm -hmm. But he'll have those situational drops where, you know, Mahomes mm -hmm. will turn to him on a third down and he makes a, a drop or an easy catch that he should have turns into a drop. He'll make some amazing ones, but it's just that inconsistency. So I think that, you know, looking at some of these guys that could step up, Chief fans are looking for a guy that could step up too. And, you know, Clyde edwards alaire is another one that when he was drafted, a lot of us Chief fans thought, oh, okay, this is a Brian Westbrook. This is what we're getting. And he's, mm -hmm. he really hasn't been as involved as, I think a lot of us thought he would be. Mm. Okay. And with all that being said, we talked about a lot of the matchups. Um, how do you feel like this game is going to go? 
Sunday night football, the world is watching. Ravens yeah. versus Chiefs, of course. A lot of people like to put it as Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes. It's not typical, it's not technically that, but it's it's fun to say. But how do you feel like this game is gonna go? I feel pretty confident as a Chiefs fan. I don't want to come mm-hmm. across as like a homer, uh, but I do. I, I feel pretty confident in what they're gonna do. It's just gonna be so hard for the Ravens to score with the Kansas City Chiefs because of the mm-hmm. injuries, because of the inexperience at receiver, like that mm-hmm. offensive line being beat up is going to be huge. So I feel pretty confident as a Chiefs fan that they're going to be able to to handle business. I know it sucks for your Ravens listeners, but <laughs> I just – honestly, unless Lamar pulls some magic out of his hat, man, I don't know how they can beat the Chiefs. And I, I do like the Ravens. I should probably say that. Like I'm a Chiefs fan, but mm-hmm. I respect the Ravens. I love the way that they've built that organization. But it's, it's going to be Lamar. He's going to have to do something very special – but he's also capable of it. Uh, you might take away all his passing options and he just roasts you for 200 yards on the ground and that's <laughs> enough. Or even when you think you're going to load the box and stop him on the ground, he'll hit you with some play actions and he, he can do enough with his arm. I know a lot of people like to question it, but the dude was the MVP and he's been very good. And he's just going to have to do it kind of on his own on Sunday. Okay. All right. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on and joining us to talk some Ravens and Chiefs. And uh, we'll see how this thing goes uh, come Sunday Night Football. So just one more time, let everybody know where they can find you at. Yeah, it's Mellow. You can find me mainly on Twitter. It's at Mellow, M-E-L-L-O. And also, I'm the host of the Mic'd Up podcast. have a daily sports podcast, and it's football season, so we're really diving in hard to all the football takes, even some of them that are not accurate, but most of them are. All right. I appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. Shout out to Graven.